well greetings everyone how was that intro i am beard sneaky sneaky preview of what we're building here today a nice warthog habitat now i know warthogs are not the you know the most interesting animals but uh, i thought that we needed a, a nice big path uh, for uh, our guests to get down to the other side of the zoo here um, and what better way than warthog walk so this is what we're going to construct today it's basically going to be a very long long thin uh, habitat uh, with a walkway uh, through it. So yeah, continuing with my love of guests being able to walk directly through uh, the animal habitats it seems. Um, and there are going to be three little sort of underpass tunnels um, underneath the bridge. I'll try to keep the bridge as low as possible. Um, I want the guests to be almost level with the water hogs, um, but you need to make some little underpasses. So a lot of terrain work. I'm kind of proud of the habitat uh, in the end. Um, but as per normal, what we're going to do on this channel is, aside from uh, watch this habitat being constructed in front of us, and I will talk a little bit about it as we go along, we're going to talk about the warthogs, or uh, the common warthog rather. Um, so uh, the common warthog is a, a native of uh, my uh, homelands, Southern Africa. Um, they're pretty common, uh, they're not endangered, um, but you know, like all wild animals, they're vulnerable to drought and hunting. Um, and I think more than anything else, they're often viewed by people as pests, uh, which is not really the greatest thing. They can destroy crops, uh, they root through farmland with their tusks, and I, I know they can spread disease as well, um, which results in uh, pigs that are not uh, in game parks uh, generally being eradicated. So we find them uh, outside of game parks, but the, the best viewings are generally within game parks. Um, they're pretty big as well, actually. They're, they're way bigger than um, you, you think. Um, they're normally between about, I think the male pigs can get about 1.5 meters in length. Um, they're really, really quite big, 150 kilograms. You don't want that thing running at you. Um, and I think more than uh, their weight and size, it's their tusks uh, that scare me. Um, I think their tusks can get sort of to around, uh, I think 25 centimeters long, and they kind of touch each other and they sharpen each other off, which uh, really makes for some deadly weapons. Uh, they can really, really, really hurt you if they want. Um, yeah, so you don't want to get into a fight uh, with a <laughs> with war dog. Um, so back to the, the habitat here. So you can see that it's uh, quite a thin habitat. Uh, not as thin as I was expecting it to be when I initially uh, constructed it or in my head, but uh, it's still relatively thin and long. Um, as per normal, we had uh, a few issues with uh, the gates and the placement of the pathing. The pathing system always gives me nightmares in here, but we got it working in the end. So basic uh, habitat down, um, and there come in our war dogs so that we can uh, start to double check that everything is good for them. So we got some traversable terrain there. Um, and then in this corner, what I decided to do was I decided to create like a little cave burrow for them. Uh, warthogs generally uh, like to live in the abandoned uh, tunnels of other predators. Um, they actually reverse in backwards, um, so in case they're in danger, they can rush out with, at you with your tasks. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd construct this little, uh, little little cave here for them to sleep in. So that's the first thing going in. Um, yeah, and I think it actually came out really well in the end. We actually ended up uh, lengthening the height of the wall there as well. Um, I think we're gonna have a have a big exhibit on the other side. I'm thinking giraffes. I don't know if anyone's uh, keen for that. Let me know. Um, right back to the warthogs. Um, so social structures of the warthogs, something I'm always exceptionally interested in. So they do have very complex uh, social structures, and being pigs, they're pretty intelligent too. Um, I think that uh, generally the way it rolls is that uh, the mature females they tend to live in sort of big interrelated family groups. Um, with their piglets um, and their offspring. Um, I do know that a uh, year old, around a year old, um, some uh, piglets leave to live in sibling groups um, and then they can split as they get older. Um, I think sometimes the female piglets return to the original group, the mother's group, um, whereas the young males will, will go off and uh, they'll form their own bachelor units uh, and then eventually their own uh, their own little groups, their little societal structures, which actually actually brings to a really uh, interesting thing about uh, male warthogs. They have they have two strategies. You get two types of male warthogs. You get the you get the tenders and you get the roamers. Uh, so the roamers are the ones that uh, literally, as it says, they 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 roam around searching for multiple multiple partners. Uh, they attempt to mate with many females. Um, 
and uh, yeah, they tend to they tend to just sort of uh, they're the rogue ones. Whereas the tenders, uh, they uh, as as it would sound, they they tend to tend to a, a group of females, uh, which become their uh, their harem, I suppose. Um, and then they obviously, obviously fight with all the roaming males that come in to try and get their group or other potential tender males. <laughs> um, Oh, there's a, the complex lives, romantic lives of warthogs. Um, it should be. A, it sounds like a TV series, doesn't it? Um, yes. Yeah, so that's the societal structure of warthogs. Um, I know they can get into some pretty brutal fights with each other, um, and I've actually seen male warthogs. Uh, yeah, male warthogs are not scared. Uh, they really aren't. When you, when you get a group of male warthogs uh, with a bit of testosterone in them, yeah. They will all fend off a lion easy. Uh, if I've seen that, just Google it. They're pretty crazy for a common warthog and for something that no one thinks is uh, that exciting. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Uh, okay, back to the habitat. So you can see what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make this, uh, make it out like this pathway. Uh, the said warthog walk uh, sits uh, sort of low within the habitat. Um, I thought that some rock basing, some rock work basing, I always give myself rocks to do, don't I? Um, could uh, help a lot um, in terms of making it sort of the rock was a sort of a part of everything. Uh, and I then built up this sort of big rock wall on this one side. I wanted to kind of try and make it a feature uh, and make it like, yeah, a big feature of the thing. I think as you are standing on the path looking up to this area, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, in fact, it's uh, more than pretty cool. It's uh, pretty darn sexy, I would say myself. So using some of these little pre-made, uh, pre-made little uh, scenery groups that I kind of put together saves time. Learning how to save time slowly but surely in this game. Uh, we stuck a big baobab tree in the corner here as well. It looks pretty fantastic. Um, I'm really keen to play with some of the bigger trees. Uh, they kind of, you kind of always double, double think yourself: should I put this here? Should I not? But uh, I think I'm going to stick a few more of them in. So yeah, uh, finishing off the rock work. Yeah, I do realize that the the warthogs they they like quite a lot of rock in their habitat. Not a lot of short grass. It's basically rock, mud, soil, and long grass is uh, kind of where they're at, which makes uh, long grass makes uh, habitat foliage decoration interesting. Uh, it's not hard, but um, it does give you um, some interesting spots to play with. So what I did is I think I tried to drop rather a lot of trees uh, in, in here, and I focused on using the water, that little sort of watering hole area as the main sort of section um, for the uh, uh, sort of heavier foliage work, if that makes sense. Um, we also dropped, I don't know if you can see there, um, as time lapse is moving really fast, but we also dropped some... Uh, um, sort of shading, shading along the pathway, um, architectural wise, and I'm sure we'll focus on them a little bit sooner. And um, they mirror some of the shade structures that we use near the entrance. I'm trying to bring through a little bit of that. Um, and then over here, we are making the entrance out to the uh, warthog walk uh, look fantastic. Um, two little shading um, benches on either side. Um, it creates this kind of like little plaza thing as you go on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to do some ladder work here, so up goes the water walk. Um, it took me a while to get these leather rings. I got these new uh, fonts uh, from the workshop. Um, I go, please, uh, excuse me, I should have written it down, but uh, I will list it in the next one. These fonts are fantastic. Thank you to all of you who create things like this for the workshop. It would not be the same uh, without you. Um, so yeah, I had a bit of trouble with these fonts. They're quite flat and hard to, se hard to select. Um, but yeah, what a walk, uh, looking, looking really good. What a walk, yeah. Um, so we're going to do some light works on here as well. I, I did try and pay a little bit more attention to the lighting than normal um, on this build. Uh, I wanted to kind of, it's something that I've let slip um, slightly in, in past builds. So yeah, keen to, keen to get that uh, looking a bit better. Um, right, so just before we let this play out now, keep my mouth shut and you guys can all kind of concentrate on the beauty laying out in front of you. A couple of, a couple of other more interesting facts about warthogs. Um, in case you didn't know, a group of warthog, a group of hog, um, is called a sounder or a sounding. Um, I don't know why. I should have looked that up. I did not. If anyone knows why, please comment below. Um, uh, yeah, so it's kind of weird actually. I find collective nouns for uh, animals can be sometimes uh, very interesting. Um, so yeah, I've, I think uh, I've mentioned a couple of other of these cool facts here. Um, so they're incredibly long, sharp tusks. 
um, the way that they will sleep in abandoned burrows, uh, and they'll go in backwards and they can charge out if predators uh, come towards them. Uh, so yeah, that's the war dog for you. Um, I actually quite like them. I think they're uh, quite uh, funny, friendly looking animals. They like to play. Um, and I actually really like the animations in the game when they uh, dig up the ground and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, let's just, uh, before I, I sound, sign off and uh, join you again for the little bit of a walkthrough at the end of this so you can get more than a peek at what we did um, and a closer look. Um, the foliage was interesting. I tried to keep it uh, nice and neat. Um, I had many multiple viewing areas on the sides as well as uh, this bridge, walkthrough bridge. But in the end, uh, I think it looked really great, and I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, please let me know um, what you think in the comments. Uh, always uh, keen to find out what people think of the habitats. Um, and more than anything else, uh, I would like to go for a cat, a lion, a predator next. So if there are any suggestions uh, for which one of those to go for first, please let me know. Uh, I would uh, appreciate your guidance there. I know it's going to be a cat of some type, not sure what. So let me know. Lion, cheetah, what are we going for? Let me know. Um, and I will now keep quiet um, and join you again in a few minutes when we take a little bit of a walkthrough. But otherwise, enjoy this uh, time lapse. I'll see you soon.
start the walkthrough now uh, as if we are coming off from looking at the hyenas so we are parked off here on the hyenas spot on the bridge here uh, we closed the park uh, so uh, yeah it's a bit quiet I um, mean you can see the warthog walk um, out there in the distance so that's yeah, the idea guests could come out here and they finish the hyena walk and they can swing right down this path and they're greeted by the warthog walk which is great um, what we've done is we put uh, two education boards on, on either side over here, kind of flanking it. There's also a viewing area over here that looks through to the little cave area that we've created. Let's uh, zoom in and have a look. This is the little sleeping cave for the uh, warthogs, which is really, really great. Um, and then this is the entrance uh, to the habitat there for the keepers. And we built this little building over here to kind of frame it in and give it a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a, an entrance way. Might make it look so bare and blank. 
Right, uh, and then I think over this side we've kept it uh, sort of uh, shielded off, as it were, because uh, behind us we have uh, the hyenas over there, uh, which are, are a big distraction. Right, okay, so let's uh, go up. So you go up the stairs and it takes you up onto this first little uh, sort of... Uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, a little plaza sort of area, and you can kind of walk down here, and you've got a view of the warthogs over here, a little feeding trough over there, uh, which is kind of cool, and you can look down into the enclosure from here, and you can swing over and do the same from this side. Oh, look, there's one of them playing down there. There's two of them playing down there with their feeding trough. Uh, hi, guys. How you doing? Well, I'm making a lot of noise. Anyway, so that's a nice little viewing entrance, a big a sort of entrance here, shade cloth, etc. Right, and then up onto the... Um, onto the pathway itself. Ooh, look, you guys are running around. Um, and it's a, just a straight long pathway, Wardog Walk, with a habitat on either side. And there's these kind of little tunnels that cross at three points uh, for the Wardogs to cross from either side. Um, so yeah, lovely shaded area over here. We kind of mirrored it on either side. So here we can park off here and have a look at the Wardogs uh, playing with uh, their toys over there, which is really, really great. Uh, there's a mud bath down here. Another great view of this habitat. Keep her doing some, some cleaning. Um, there's a little bit of a watering hole over here in this little tunnel. Looks really, really cool. Uh, oh, having a swim down there. Um, yeah, and it continues down. There's this lovely back facing rock wall along there which kind of frames it in. And then we're going to do a big habitat over on the other side of that fence. And it literally just comes all the way down the path. And we go down stairs and this is going to become a little bit of a plaza i think we're going to do some food courts etc etc here uh, but there again what up walk not such a grand entrance as on the other side but still pretty cool and then on the left and the right we have these little mesh sort of viewing areas again so you can kind of have a look into the habitat and when the war dogs come this way you can have a check um and we've done the same one out this side with a, a feeding post a fruit feeding post over there um, and hopefully that will uh, entice some of the warthogs over this way. So yeah, that's it. Um, let's zoom out and have a look at the full uh, habitats. It's looking really cool. Um, it's a nice long habitat. It's so much bigger than they need to be. Uh, it needs to be, but um, I love building big habitats, giving the, the warthogs a nice space. This is a conservation park, not really a zoo. So we're going to give them more space than they really needed. So that is the uh, Tunkwa Conservation Park Warthog Walk. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed that. I think it looks pretty good and uh, yeah if there's any comments let me know um, otherwise I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode until then please wear a mask wash those hands stay safe I am the beard signing out